My name's Dr. Gary Crotez, and I'm a coach and author of The Idea Mindset, a book about how to figure out what you want and how to get it. The unlock moment is that flash of remarkable clarity when you suddenly know the right path ahead. When I'm in conversation with my coaching clients, these are the breakthroughs that are so profound that they remember vividly where they were, who they were with, what they were thinking when their unlock moment happened. In this podcast, I'll be meeting and learning about people who have accomplished great things or brought about significant change in their life, and you'll be meeting them with me. We'll be finding out what inspired them, how they got through the hard times, and what they learned along the way that they can share with you. Thank you for joining me on this podcast to hear all about another Unlock Moment. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Unlock Moment podcast. Today, I'm delighted to have my very good friend, Marietta Melrose, on the show. Marietta is an actor, creator, producer, and TV host based in Los Angeles. She can be seen recurring in hit shows like Atypical on Netflix, and also as a lead sorority girl in Ted Bundy, American Boogeyman on Hulu. She has interviewed and met all of the Oscar winners in the last several years, including Brad Pitt, Viola Davis, and Lady Gaga, to name a few. Marietta rarely gets to reveal her true identity, as she loves audiences to learn more about her through the eyes of her characters. Marietta was the first Bulgarian actress to attend Royal Central School of Speech and Drama. Her job includes hearing no a thousand times a week and transforming it into a yes. Marietta is also an advocate for actors who need help on their creative path. She is always on the quest to discover what it takes to be performing at her best, just like an Olympic athlete. Marietta has an incredible story to tell, and I know you'll love hearing all about how she's found those moments of clarity as she's forged a path from home in Bulgaria to acting school in London and now to the bright lights of Hollywood. Marietta, welcome to The Unlock Moment. Gary, thank you so much for having me. It's always such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. So Maria, to start out with telling us a little bit about your your story, tell us about the journey you went on to to get where you are today. Absolutely. I was born in a small town in Bulgaria called Burgas, which is by the seaside. I know you've been there um, in your competing career. (laughs) And um, when I was very young, I was still in kindergarten, there was a teacher there who thought that I have singing ability and musical talents. And so um, at the age of four, I started playing the piano. So I was in a way performing from very early on. And I feel like, you know, acting and music, they're really related Um, And then later on, we moved with my family to the capital of Bulgaria, Sofia. So there I had more opportunities to explore different types of art and stage performance. um, And the piano was still there. I was playing six, seven hours a day as a kid. But I kind of found more joy in, um, in, in acting. And in the capital, there were more opportunities to explore that. There were more acting studios. And um, I was at the time at a private school where I was on stage all the time, be it, um, you know, talking to different guests at the school that were coming in, ambassadors or um, leading um, performances. I was always on stage. And that was something that captured my interest from very early on. And when you think about that that moment when you when you went from this is something that I enjoy to this is something that I really see as my future. Where where were you when that happened? So there was a very special person at the time. He was an acting legend and also a teacher who noticed my talent, and he invited me. It was invitation only um, to his studio, which was in a professional theater one of the really famous theaters in Bulgaria. And so every weekend I started going to that studio and it was there that I really felt connected to the legacy of what the, the craft and the art had to bring just entering the theater and physically being there. I felt that powerful 
transformation, just connecting to the legacy of what the theater had to bring and all the performers that have been there over the years, having that ability to step on that stage and warm up or uh, create segments from different literary works. Um, it was that moment there that I felt really connected to. That's the thing I want to do. And I was also always an excellent student. Um, so it was really hard to convince my parents that that's going to be it. You know, my mom wanted me to study politics, be an attorney or an ambassador. Um, and so there was a performance there at that studio. And I was doing the monologue for from Romeo and Juliet, the end monologue before she takes her life. And that was the moment where my mom was like, okay, I'm convinced this is going to be it. And it's not because you're my daughter, but I was in tears because I was literally moved from your stage presence and how you made me feel. And there was something about acting that I discovered that I really was interested in helping people get into their vulnerability and their feelings. I felt like as a kid, I was very emotional, very strong, but also very emotional. And I noticed that other people or children are not in their feelings the way I was because they thought in a way that's a weakness or they were scared of their feelings. And I wasn't, I was always embracing them. And I thought there was like some kind of power there to really embrace your feelings. And my way of, of, um, encountering acting was that, um, that thing that I, I, I wanted to help people be in their feelings and feel, um, more. It's amazing when I, when I listen to you and I can hear how vividly these memories are for you. And you were, you were young at this time when you, you, you were young, when you, when you knew that it was your, 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 your life ahead of you. Yes, I was, I was 10 years old. And what I, when I look back at that moment in time, what I find really interesting is my parents, they wanted to go on family vacations over the weekends. They wanted to do family stuff, but I had the power at 10 years old to convince them that, no, we have to stay here for the weekend because I have my acting studio and I can't miss that. And they were going with it. So I was like, as a kid, I, I almost had more power over my mom than I have now because I managed to convince her to change her lifestyle. Amazing. And, and as you went through your teenage years, how, how did your, your, your focus and your drive to act, did, 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 was it always strong or did it, did it come and go over the years? That's a really interesting question that I've been uh, reflecting upon because the relationship with acting really changed for me over the years. As a kid, I just loved the attention. I loved having the opportunity to go to a restaurant and like play a song for everybody and have that, have that attention as a kid. But later on, I also lost my dad at a very early age and I was bullied in high school. So acting became a way for me to escape, to just have a different reality and transform into a different character um, with that desire to experience what it's like to be somebody else. There were moments in high school that it was so painful. I was thinking about changing schools, but at the same time, the thing that kept me going at the time was, oh, I know after school, I'm going to go and do the play, or I'm going to explore what it's like to be somebody else. So that was the relationship there. And now I think it's transformed to just that curiosity of learning more about myself and learning more about myself through other characters. So it's definitely changed over the years, but it was, it was that moment that I, that unlock moment with uh, Romeo and Juliet's monologue where I, I knew that there's going to be no plan B for me, that that's going to be it. Cause you know, with the arts, it's always possible to go to college um, have that as um, another thing that you do on the side uh, but at, at that moment, I knew that's that's my calling. That's what I want to do for the rest of my life is tell stories and 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 somehow impact people by storytelling. When I listen to you, I can hear that commitment coming through that that no plan B um, in in the power of the way you you tell the story. Um, and it's something I, I've always felt 
with you. We've known each other you know, quite a long time. Um, so tell me more then, you, you, you got to a place in your, in your life where you decided that you wanted to explore leaving Bulgaria and coming to England, coming to London to, to take the next step in your training. Tell me about that transition. Yes, there was a sense of when I was living in Bulgaria that I always wanted to be somewhere else. Like Bulgaria wasn't enough for my dreams. And part of it was because we know that in London, New York, or Los Angeles, those are the places to be if you want to do the craft and the art on a bigger scale and, and touch more people. And it wasn't the thing that I, I, I think it's also something very important important to me is that it wasn't the fame or the money that ever led me to those places. I was never interested in fame. I was just like, where is the place where I can meet the most amount of people and impact more and be in movies that are seen all over the world? Um, and it wasn't the fame because I feel like there's a really interesting thing with acting. A lot of people are are doing it because of the fame and the money. But if I wanted to be rich, acting would be the last thing that I would, <laughs> I would be thinking about. Um, so yes, I, I was saying that Bulgaria was never enough for my dreams. So I started exploring opportunities to go study in London because I knew that the the schooling there is, is, is the best for stage. Um, and two summers in a row, I had the opportunity to go and study in RADA and Lambda and just prepare for those auditions um, that were coming up to actually study there. And I feel like that was something that was really important at the time to just feel like I belong, to make, to make peace with that mindset of me of, I'm not good enough or I don't deserve to be here because I'm a, I'm coming from a small European country. So I used that opportunity to feel literally I would go at RADA and just touch the walls when I was at those summers there and, and, and connect with that environment and be like, no, I deserve to be here. I'm good enough. And that's what I'm going to do. So I created some relationships. Um, I took the opportunity to to obviously study and prepare, um, but also just meet people and the cultural differences, feel what it's like to to live in London. And is that the place for me? And of course, like in every hero's journey, there's the ups and downs. And, and that summer, I was a little crushed by one of the teachers there who was questioning my choice. Why do you want to study in London when you can study in Bulgaria and not have this, the language barriers or, or, or struggle with, with that move. Um, and, and that really impacted me at the time thinking, oh, here's another person that thinks that that's not possible. And so I hired the best accent coach at the time in London and I worked with her for a long time. And that was, again, an encounter that was really impactful on a deeper level because an accent, it's part of your identity. It's, it doesn't define who you are. It doesn't define your ability, but it is part of my identity. And it was interesting because again, it, it woke up that voice of Marietta, you're not good enough. You'll never be an actor because you can do accents and that's what it's required to be to be there. Um, and so I had to, in order to quiet that voice, I just did the work. And that's, again, another underlying current in my, in my experience that I always lean into the work and rely that it's going to be there and support me in those moments when it gets difficult. And I know that my, my listeners will be so interested to hear your story when you're talking about that, that, that voice that says, you know, you're not good enough, that you don't deserve this. Because, you know, lots of people are in lots of different careers, lots of different sectors, lots of industries. And acting and dancing are, are you know, worlds that we've both been in, obviously, are in many ways very, very different from what most people do in their everyday life. But actually, that voice, that judgment um, that's there with you all the time is common in all of those environments. And maybe 
even more so in in something like the acting industry and i'm sure we'll talk later about about you know the audition process and and people constantly judging you and how you deal with that now i wanted to ask you uh, when you think back to your your time in in london when you were training when was the first time that you felt now i belong here that's a great question because it was i guess during the training it came from my relationships with my classmates there and just that dynamic of what i have to bring to the table is being seen and heard it didn't come from my teachers it came from the community and the people i was working with cuz oftentimes especially me as a kid being a good student i had the good girl syndrome of always trying to please the teachers and and hear a good word but at the time at central i found power in community and creating with my classmates and putting my trust into the ensemble i felt power in that and that's where i felt like when that i belonged so you found your role you found your your voice in that group yes i i i would say that cuz i what i brought to the table was a lot of positivity and when people let's say weren't feeling like doing the work or were tired i would be the person that would be no we have to keep going and let's try this and let's try that and i was always um because i was so in touch with my feelings i would be the person that would keep the team together i would start with like big hugs in the morning and the lots lots of just compassion and kindness and now that you ask me this question i'm actually reflecting it upon that and if you call any of my central classmate that's the, i'm pretty sure that's what they're going to say i always brought the positivity and that was kind of my role in the group during central cuz you know it's like it's like a cowboy soldier camp drama school it can get really difficult because it is true they they break you down to build you up again and you kind of have to forget everything about yourself you know there was there was a moment where my teachers were like we have a problem with your hair it's always there it's like i can't see your transformation cuz your hair is always there and and my hair is again part of my identity um but in those moments it was the work and the ensemble and the power of community and having somebody to share what i'm going through that's what kept me going of course there were moments where I'm, i again questioned is this the right place am i actually fitting in um but it was the work and the feeling i was always going with the feeling and while i was at central i was also performing um at edinburgh fringe festival and again that's something that was very unique about my experience they don't usually let you audition or do outside productions while you're at drama school but that were some of the most powerful and wonderful moments in my career so far just having that experience in the edinburgh french 24/7 meeting artists being on the same wavelength with people and creating um and impacting through storytelling um i really really enjoyed that So having already made the 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 huge change from uh, a small seaside town in Bulgaria to the capital and then from there to the 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 big city in in London and your training and you then decided that that wasn't enough and you wanted to to move out to LA so tell tell me a little bit a bit about going out to LA and and landing there and 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 what happened next It's so interesting cuz You changed careers a few times in your life mm-hmm. and I changed places which is very it's a very similar experience because you start from the beginning again you start building you know moving to a new place is almost like changing a career um you have to have a very specific kind of skill set to be easily adaptable but also to have the ability to really rely on yourself because there's nobody who can do it for you Um I did a course that was uh gifted by my mother. She let me go to LA for 2 weeks thinking, "Oh, you just finished drama school. Let's see what, you know, 
what Hollywood has to offer, not thinking at all that I'm going to stay. She had no idea. She probably wouldn't have given me that opportunity if she knew I'm going to move to America. And so I came here for two weeks and met a lot of industry professionals um, that were really excited about me. They were all like, oh, you're going to be working so much. You look so young. There's so many opportunities out here. And of course, as a believer and a dreamer, that's all I needed to hear. I was like, this is, this is my place. But I also noticed that everybody is looking for the next big thing. And just like I'm watching the show 1883, which is about the Oregon Trail and the immigrant experience. And I, I was I was a dreamer. I mean, America is built on dreamers. And I just felt that energy that this is the place for me. And I went with my gut. And on the second day of me being here, I called my mom and I was like, you know what? I'm I'm staying here. She's like, what do you mean you're staying? Yeah, you're staying for two weeks, right? Like, no, I am going to figure it out. I'm going to move out here. So you need to find a moving company and move my stuff from London to Bulgaria. And that's what's happening. So I'm delegating this part of the work to you and I'm going to figure everything else. And that was on day and two. <laughs> that, was, that was on day two. Those meetings were going too well. <laughs> that's amazing. And, and and that came to pass. So 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 your furniture went went home from London, and you stayed out in LA. <laughs> it did. It really did. But also, my mom. She's she is very resourceful as well. Because at the time, she did the London part of the work. But also, I was here without um, the ability to actually legally stay in the country. I had to figure out how to do the whole immigration process. So I didn't have social security. I didn't have any of those things, but she managed to find a person I could stay with from Bulgaria. So she, you know, she was, she's also well-connected. She, she, she was helping me as much as she could, but at the time, what was really heartbreaking is I was doing all the foundation work of meeting with attorneys and all of them were saying, it's not going to be possible. There's no way you have just finished drama school, have no credits. You have no credibility to move out here. And I just knew I went with my gut. And that's another thing about me, which I feel like hopefully the listeners can have some trust in that in their gut and going with the feeling of this is the right thing I feel for whatever reason, this is the right space and place for me. And even though all the attorneys were saying it's not possible, I figured it out. I found the person that believed that could help me out um, uh, on, on this journey. And we managed to get the O-1 visa, which took a long time and heartache. Um, but I managed to stay. <laughs> Um, um, what what does that experience and the way you handled it tell you about yourself? That I am a survivor and no matter what people say, I push through. If the thing is right for me, you know, I, I, I do have a lot of crazy Hollywood stories. Like one of the managers I met on that trip that was supposed to sponsor my O-1 visa in the midst of us working together, he told me he was a vampire and needed to bite me to turn me into an empowered actress in the audition room. And that was an experience which I had with a person I trusted that could handle my career at the time. So again, it, it might sound like comedy right now, but at the time I was like, I just, what am I doing? I'm in this unfamiliar place with people I don't know, with no ability to stay here, with a vampire manager. What am I doing? <laughs> but I also had a sensor of when something doesn't feel right. And if it doesn't feel right, I would just shift and find the right person who can help me and always ask for help. I feel like it was really uncomfortable and I felt really shy to do that because I'm so self-reliant and self-sufficient. But at the time I had no other choice. So I had to connect with creators and ask them for potential contracts because that's part of the visa process. You need to have work lined up here and just introduce myself and let them know that I'm really excited to work with them or be 
however way incorporated in their productions. And that's something that I had to do, even though it was uncomfortable. And I feel like people really have a hard time asking for help. But generally, when we meet people and we ask them for something, you know, the worst, worst case scenario is you can hear a no. But if you don't ask, you're not even going to know if it's a no or a yes. So at the time, I kept asking and I kept being curious and, and see how I can be of help to others as well. It wasn't a one-way street. I always wanted it to be a win-win situation for the person that's helping me. And people recognize that. People know what it's like to come to LA because most people in LA are coming from somewhere else. So they want to help. These, these two elements of your personality that shine through, there's the one that is the creative, the dreamer, the believer. And there's this other one that is like driven, gritty, punchy, uh, and not willing to give up and not willing to hear no. And it's it's interesting to hear how those two play through because, you know, the persona you described when you were in drama school and you were the you were the person that came in in the morning with all the positivity um and the person you're describing who establishes yourself with no grounding with no foundation in l a and and you're you're committed to staying, but you've got to work out a way to do it. Those are two very different sides of your personality that that you play in different circumstances. Yes. And a lot of people, that's why I also say I'm an advocate for actors because a lot of actors would try and stay in LA. They would hear a couple of no's and they would go back. They might be actors from Australia or mm-hmm. Europe. And I want to help those people. I want to help them believe that it is possible, not just for actors, any creative, it could be um, you know, it could even be a dentist. It's 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 a similar process that's really difficult. I have friends of mine, and and my friend is a psychologist, and her partner is a dentist, and they're now going through the same process, figuring it out. And me having been through that, I help them on their journey as well with the belief and knowing that it is possible. So that's why I'm. Also, I am so grateful for being on this podcast to share that journey that it is possible. The underlying current in all of this is it is possible if that's the right place for you. If you want to do it for your career, for love or whatever reason it is to move to America, it is possible no matter what people say. And where does the desire to help come from, do you think? It makes me feel good, but also I do believe that the world would be a better place if people are compassionate and kind. I think kindness is something we can do and it's free and it comes from a place of gratitude. I am grateful to have had those struggles and those experiences because believe me, there were there were moments where it was really hard to get out of bed. It was I was probably depressed. At the time, I didn't know it because I had to move forward. But now looking back, I was probably going through severe depression. Um, And so if I've had that experience, I want to share it. And and if I can help somebody perhaps less have less struggle, why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I share my discoveries? I feel like the world would be a better place. And I do feel like another reason why I'm so connected to acting is because it comes from a place of empathy. And you have to imagine what it's like to be in another people's, another person's shoes to really embody another being. I mean, just, we see it. We we see it this week, what happened, what's happening with Ukraine and Russia. And we are living in a world where empathy, I feel like is the only cure to healing and, and, um, you know, suffering is always going to be there, but hopefully I, if I can be a part of that journey to making the world a better place, I would love to. It comes through so strongly with you. Where does the grit come from? Well, my my father was an athlete, and I saw his discipline from a very young age. He would always start his day with focusing on himself, working out in the morning, paying attention to to his mindset, and working really hard. I mean, his 
his legacy that he left and and what what was left for me was that mindset of I want to really work hard so my daughter doesn't need to suffer and struggle but also have the ability to do whatever she wants and witnessing that I feel like an athlete like Olympic Olympic athletes we share a very similar lifestyle in that the work putting your feet on the ground every war, every day doing the work not seeing results for sometimes for years you know the last time i worked actually and i was actually filming was in february so it's been a year but nothing in my mindset has shifted on the contrary i'm encountering so many opportunities on daily basis and my enthusiasm cannot be shifted because because of that because uh, i grew up witnessing uh discipline and it's something that i've always done and so you've been in in la now for for a few years and and you've advanced out from just acting to also acting and producing so when you look back over the last year and as you say i mean it's been a very difficult time in the pandemic for for actors for sure um but you've also been producing some of your own short films too um how how is your identity shifting um as as you're developing your career in la we see it now with a lot of actors uh, reese witherspoon she has her own production company oprah winfrey the legacy that she's created over the years there's this sense of actors want to create their own work and want to be empowered and and that's what i want to do i i just i can't wait for constant permission to be given to to to, to do what i want to do um and i find a sense of relief but also creativity when i'm creating the stories that i want to tell how do i want to change the narrative in people's lives or what do i have to bring to the table as a storyteller um and so it's it's a very empowering experience it was again it was really hard cuz i ranked up a ton of credit card debt in the process of creating my own work but i did it and it was rewarded it, we did really well um in festivals i had an amazing cast of talented people that jumped into it and did it and now I, in the next stage in the process is after the festivals is sending it to people so that again reaching out seeing who believes in my vision and who would be the person that i can continue creating with um i think that again as creatives and artists it's really hard to build strategy that's healthy and and doing that kind of business oriented work every day but in order to get it done vision is not enough you have to have a purpose and strategy and that's something that i was reminded in the idea mindset in the book something to go back to cuz it gets really difficult when you keep hearing no or oh that project is not right for my portfolio right now it can get really crushing and difficult but also um it's really empowering when you get those yeses so that's why in my bio i put in continuously you know changing no to a yes because i am the only person who can do it i can't wait uh for other people to give me permission I'm a creator. Yeah. You are, you are. I think it's something that I'd really like my listeners to to hear more from you. Um what what have you learned from being in an environment where, you know, the day-to-day job is going into a room and somebody saying no, not because you're not good but because you're in LA. That's, you know, it it is it's one of the world's most competitive environments you can possibly be in. And what have you learned about being able to take control and get on the front foot in your interaction your dialogue with these people that are constantly judging as is their profession to judge you how have you taken control of that absolutely and i think things have shifted so much and uh, again we can find reasons to be grateful for the pandemic 
And so my reason to be grateful for the pandemic is to that I had the ability to slow down and focus on self-reflection. And where am I in this process of, of my mindset? What can I do better? And I've discovered that trusting my instincts is something that's kept me going um, and also surround myself with people I trust and having those day-to-day conversations and sharings um, with, in this case, my husband, he's my constant rock and I share everything with him and I, you know, the, 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 we track progress in a very healthy way of where I've been a year ago and that's kind of the strategy part of how things have shifted and being grateful, starting my day with gratitude because things have tremendously, massively changed for me in in the acting industry, but also in my mindset over the years. And that comes from a place of gratitude and tracking progress because it's it can get really difficult, right? You continuously hear no, but from two years ago, where I'm at right now is those constant pins, those constant where she's in, in, in like the top three choices, right? And that's progress. But at the same time, continuously being connected to my vision and looking back to my mindset um, and staying in compassion and kindness to myself. Because I mentioned that being kind and compassion to others, but also love myself for how far I've come in my journey. Because we rarely get to celebrate our wins. I feel like people, again, another thing like takeaway, I'm, I hope in their life is perhaps having a list of like a gratitude journal and every week, what have been your wins? How are you better today than you were yesterday? A lot of my listeners will have their own moments where they're standing outside the audition room. But the audition room for them might be, you know, a conversation with their boss, maybe, you know, walking into a room thinking about how do I ask for a pay rise or how do I ask for more flexible working or maybe going into a job interview. Um, and so bring us into your mind when you're standing outside the audition room about to walk through those doors with everything that you've learned from your time in Hollywood. What's in your mind when you're about to walk through that door and deliver that performance? Having a deep relationship with the human that's standing in front of me, because it's so easy to give power to the other person and see them as, oh, they're the producer and they're the casting director and I want to impress them, or this is my boss and I need to please them, but actually look at them as a human being and embrace them for who they are because they have their insecurities and weaknesses and they need help as well. So just connecting on a human level and trying to kind of change the molecules in the air of no we're there's no power here we're both equal and we're together in this moment in time and actually I'm the solution to your problem you're trying to cast this I'm bringing you what you need and I'm going to make you look good so I'm helping you not just giving my power to them I think that's that's power that's that's helped me a lot and just connecting on on a human level, try and have a conversation, try and see where they're they're coming from. Because at the end of the day, everyone wants to do a good job. As much as I want to be cast, they want to cast a show that's really good. Um, So don't give your power away. (laughs) And I, I want my listeners to really tune into that thing you said, where you said, we're in this conversation because you have a need and I could be the solution to your need. It, it's 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 a shift in the power dynamic from I'm trying to impress you to hey you might need me. Um, and I, I just want people to tune into that thing because it was so powerful. If and if you think back to how you were in your head maybe two or three years ago going into the audition compared with now, what's changed in that time? What's become stronger for you uh, in in your mindset going into that audition? Oh, well, a lot's changed. It was actually really painful. Every time I had to drive in LA, we drive a lot. It was really, it was really a struggle to go in the room and, and have that mindset of, I was really trying to impress them, which 
takes away all the creativity. It takes, it takes it all away. And it's, it's really not about that, but it's, you know, with me being in the industry and having more experiences, I realized that, um, what I have to bring to the table with my experiences, diversity, um, life experiences, intelligence, emotional intelligence is going to be very different from what the next person has to bring. And sometimes it's going to be what the production needs and other times it's not going to be that, but it's not personal. The project is their baby. And knowing that that no today might be for reasons that are completely outside of our control and don't have anything to do with talent, but has to do with, oh, actually the lead role in um, in the show is the lead actress that we've already cast is very similar to Marietta's look. So this project's not going to work out. But if I've had a healthy experience in the room, today's no might shift and transform in tomorrow's yes. And that's like a really strong example for me with what happened with Atypical. Initially, when I got to LA, uh, one of my first auditions was actually for Atypical and it was for the series regular role. It was the lead role. And of course, rarely they give they give those series regular roles to people with absolutely no credits. It was one of my first auditions when I got here out of drama school. And at the time that was no, but what I went back to is that casting director loved me. And on a human level, we formed a really great relationship. We stayed in touch. And two years later, they cast me in a different role and brought me back in. But I already had a relationship with the casting director. It was a human experience. I could play in the room and really tap into what what the character has to bring to the table and just me being a vessel for that experience rather than I- imposing Marietta's insecurities. Because that those two years ago, I imposed my insecurities and that doesn't do justice to the character because the character has different vulnerabilities and insecurities to my own. So, so, so tapping into that from a creator's point of view, but also the humanity of it, of it all, that nobody's going to be a better advocate for yourself than you. And knowing that no might be yes, two years down the line. It's just different timing. I think as ever, you, you tell the story so well, and, and there are so many brilliant learnings that, that people listening in will, will pick up from, from the story you tell there. So so Marietta, when you you look at the year ahead, um, what, what's your focus for the year? What, what's, do you have plans for things coming up? You know, how are you seeing the next 12 months? So right now it's a really interesting time for me as an actor because it's pilot season and all the big TV shows are being cast. So I get to explore and, and tap into different types of shoes every day. Like yesterday I was in 1870 and I had to like ride horses and use guns. And the character was the first U S detective, um, in 1870. We didn't, we, we don't know about this woman historically. It was just so interesting to do the work and, and learn what it was like to live at the time period and immerse myself. So from an acting perspective, acting's point of view, it's a really juicy time for me to continuously explore different perspective, pr- perspectives. And um, I also got asked to produce somebody's project based on what next, um, the project that I produced, I was offered to uh, be part of the producer's team on another project. So that's going to be interesting for me to explore again, from something that I created that was really, it was really difficult um, producing and, and, and sponsoring it financially all myself. A- another opportunity came out of that. So that's going to be a definite focus. But also a trip to London uh, is something that I'm looking forward to after pilot season. That'd be fantastic. And we, we'd be very welcoming of you if you're here, of course. Um, and Marietta, tell us where people can find out more about you. So I'm on so all social media platforms. It's actually interesting. The last in the last week, I tried to do a social media cleanse. It could really be a good thing sometimes. As much as we need to like 
put ourselves out there. Um, so you can find me on Instagram. My name is Marietta um, underscore Melrose. That's on Instagram. And also on Facebook, Marietta Melrose. Um, I'd be happy to hear from you and answer any questions or help you out on your journey and path as an artist. Marietta, I've absolutely loved having you on 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 the show today and telling your story as 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 passionately uh, as you do. It's it's. I think people are going to be really inspired by hearing you. Um, the unlock moment is that flash of remarkable clarity when you suddenly know the right path ahead. What Marietta brings to life so powerfully is how taking ownership and accountability is a critical enabler of achieving your dreams. As I say in my book, The Idea Mindset, only you will change your life. Trying to make it in film and TV is no easy journey, but she's been committed to her goals even when others around her might have doubted her. In an industry where you are habitually rejected on a daily basis, she's built her strength and resilience to be able to survive and thrive in the spotlight. Hers is a journey of passion and empowerment, and I know she's a huge inspiration to young actors who are making their way through. Marietta, thank you so much for joining me on the Unlock Moment, and best of luck with your future endeavours. Thank you. This has been The Unlock Moment, a podcast with me, Dr. Gary Crotez. Thank you for listening in. You can find out more about how to figure out what you want and how to get it in my book, The Idea Mindset, available in physical book, ebook, and audiobook formats. Follow me on Instagram and subscribe to this podcast to get notified about future episodes. Join me again soon 